question is from Tad Mills. What advice would you give to someone who wants to squat deeper but can't break parallel? I just did a YouTube video. On that. Did you? Yeah, no, it's what's the it's the latest YouTube video right now. It's just uh, it just while well, this drops in a day or whatever. So it was yesterday's. So it's live right now. Go watch it. I mean, it, I I discuss uh, the three main things: uh, mobility uh, movements that uh, I had to do to get to that point because right. I was at a point where I couldn't even break parallel. Uh, and then how I prime now that I've done all the work to get in that. What do you position. think is the most general offender? I mean, would you say ankles would be a first start these days? Yeah, I, I would. Uh, so either ankle or hip. Yeah. yeah it's got to be one of those two. Yeah, I would say that. You know, it, it, to be honest, though, I, all three, I think, are just – are. Mm, yeah. it's rare. That's just being Let's general. put it this way. It's rare that I don't see a problem in all three. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people, especially today, lack the thoracic mobility because of the forward shoulder and we're on phones and shit like that. So very few people have good uh, uh, thoracic mobility. And then uh, very we're in, we're seated we're sitting at ninety degrees on chairs and couches and toilets and cars all the time. So mm -hmm. how often are we ever really deep? So hips are almost always there. And then again, when, when do we ever do something where we allow the knee to travel uh, beyond the toes? Never. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think all three are offenders. It's really how bad are you in each one? It's, I don't think I've, I, I've yet to meet somebody uh, that's, you know, older than fucking 25 years old that they're, they don't have they don't have an, a mobility issue in hip, ankle, and thoracic. It's just about how bad it it really is. Yeah, mm -hmm. one one thing I used to do that was uh, just kind of an easy practice. I, I can even tell you on the podcast, and you'll get the idea. So you don't necessarily have to see what's going on. Is I would take a box that was lower than the person can comfortably normally squat when they're doing squat. So let's say they can only go to ninety degrees. I would take a box that would have them go, you know four inches below that. I would put that behind them. Then I would have them without any weight, slowly and controlled, just totally controlled their, their descent until they slowly sit down on the box. Then they'd stand up however they would. So all we would do is we would focus on the negative. So I would initially get them to do the negative so where they would get lower than they normally could. Mm -hmm. Then they'd stand up however they normally normally stand up, and then we would repeat it. And what it would do is it was really effective. Um, it was really effective because it would teach people to to be able to connect and control that descent process. Then from there, once I, they got good at that, because what ends up happening is they would go down to 90, and then that extra four inches, they'd want to fall yeah. back down. So the focus was slow down, control it, slow down. But because the box is there to catch them, they would allow them to, uh, and then they'd sit down, and then they'd repeat it again. I would do the same thing. I'd, I'd also use it as like a, a step ladder approach, where I would have like I'd stack plates to where you know they could comfortably get remove one. Yeah, you know, slowly kind of work their way down. We'd work over this over the course of a few weeks to where we could get down to like some real depth that they felt like they could own. And then also my older clients, I would end up using a, a tool like a TRX or something like that where. It was actually nice because they could have, they felt secure because they could hold on to something. Uh, but then, you know, at that point where they normally felt like they would fall over, uh, they could gain that depth. But then I would really try to just cue them to now like really squeeze and, and feel, feel that in your legs to help drive, you know, off of your heels and get yourself back up. Yeah. Now take your time. Take your time with this because uh, what happens is some people gain new range of motion because they practice. And then they're excited and they push themselves a little bit. And then this is where they, they hurt themselves. It's very common to hurt yourself when you train in a new range of motion, even though you feel like you're strong. So the, the, the idea is to be very, very, very precautious, better safe than sorry kind of approach. So when you're squatting to new depths or you're testing yourself, go way easier than you think. Like way easier. Like you think you want to basically think to yourself, like I could go harder than that. Okay, well then stop right there. Because the risk of injury is really high when you're testing uh, new ranges of motion. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources and books. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.